I'm William Kumwembe with Business Time on Times Television. This is a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country and, of course, beyond. And coming up in the program today, demos bring business at a standstill. We have a report. And Omoz Holdings rates first half of 2019 as tough in business. We have these and other stories. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome and in our main story in the program, the impact of the continued demonstrations on business cannot be overemphasized since vote casting on May 21, business has been slow. Businesses were brought to a standstill again in the country's major cities on Thursday as scores of Malawians took to the streets protesting the May 21 tripartite election results. But what could be the solution? Chimwemwe Mangazi solicited views from some small and medium entrepreneurs. Since the May 21 election results were announced on May 27, the business operating environment has been shaky, largely due to after effects of the polls. While businesses have not been spared from election fever in past general elections, this year the time span is elongated. Two opposition political parties, Malawi Congress Party and UTM, are disputing the election results in court. On Thursday, most shops in Lilongwe, Blantyre, Zomba and Mzuzu cities and in other districts remained closed while those open were poorly patronized. Some small and medium entrepreneurs we spoke to express mixed feelings. This kind of demonstrations have got a big, very big impact, especially myself. I'm a driver for this center. I'm failing to make money just because people are not traveling. I think the best way they can do is just to sit down and discuss, especially Mrs. Jane Ansa must resign so that this can stop. Otherwise, those kind of NGOs won't stop from demonstrating. Even myself, I'm very bored with this. I wish she could stop, I mean, she would resign. We are losing a lot of things because it's, only, it's not only me who is doing the business. Even the Indians are not opening their shops. They are afraid for, for their shops to be looted. Like myself, I'm also afraid sometimes when I meet those kind of people who sitting along the road, I'm afraid to see maybe they can smash my, my car. Our business are suffering. As you are aware that when people are demonstrating, uh, people coming from outside Blanda, they fear they for, for, for their money. So we are not able to sell. We may stay for a, at a shop, maybe without any customer coming just because of the, these demonstrations. In fact, we are losing a lot of money. Uh, as you are aware that uh, we small enterprise entrepreneurs, we depend on how, uh, hand to mouth. So as of now, because of these demonstrations, we are not able to generate that money. Maybe I can say up to we are 75% below our, uh, our target. That is to say the money which we, we, we get per day. Yeah, they're affecting our business in great part because most of the customers are in great fears because when the, the, when the demonstrations are in progress, they fear to come at, at, at our shop, even in the other business, to get things which, which, which they want due to the situations that happen during the demonstrations are in, in progress, That's, such as some... The, the, the protest, some protesters, they, they fundraise the properties of the other business, other business, but every business people. So that, that things that may affect the uh, business as he, we, as you can see from half seven is the time what we open. Up to now, we have not even get even one, even one customer. National Association of Small and Medium Enterprises Chairperson William Mwale said parties should come to an agreement within the shortest time. This is the fourth time Malawians led by the civil society have gone to the streets to demand the resignation of Jen Ansa as make chairperson. The political uncertainty forced Malawi Confederation of Chambers of Commerce and Industry, an umbrella body of private sector players, to postpone its trade fair. The exhibition which was initially scheduled for June 20 to 30, was postponed to August 31 as countries withdrew their participation. 
In a related development, property management firm Omodzi Holdings, which manages the Bingu International Conference Center and the Presidential Hotel in Lilongwe, has described business in the first half of 2019 as very bad. Chief Executive Officer of Omodzi Park, Master Maliro, said the pre-election and post-election situation have slowed down business. We have the whole story in this report. According to Mariro, things have been tough since the start of the year, although there was hope that things would improve after the elections. Uh, business is bad. Uh, actually, I can say the whole of this year business hasn't been very good. Uh, as we were approaching the general elections, we um, experienced a slowdown in, in business uh, up to the general elections itself. And now the impasse after the general elections uh, is is not good for is not good for business. Now, with the coupled with the demonstrations that we are experiencing now, it has just made things worse. Mariro also took some time to assure customers of continued improved services in the aftermath of a management contract with Piemont. Uh, there are basically two two reasons why we have organized this uh, breakfast. First of all is uh, to uh, show our appreciation to the decision makers in the various organizations and the companies for the businesses that they have been giving us and they, they continue giving us. Uh, we want to recognize them. No, this is a two-way issue. They give us business and we also do something um, uh, to, to them. Uh, secondly, the, the reason why we have done this is to inform them as um, uh, important stakeholders in our business that uh, Piermont, who, who was managing this facility, they have now pulled out of the management agreement and uh, we want to assure um, our clients that the uh, services will remain the same, um, even, even more better for, 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 from what Piermont was, uh, was doing. Because we noticed that there were some uh, policies that Piermont brought into the country um, which were not very palatable to, to, to our economy and to our situation. You know, Piermont was uh, like a global company. They were operating in South Africa, Botswana and the other countries. So they had policies, uniform policies for all these places. Um, some which were not working here in Malawi. So we we'll bring in our own uh, policies, change things here and there to make sure that uh, our clients benefit the services that uh, we offer them. Umozi Holdings manages the Bingo International Convention Center, the President's Hotel and the Presidential Villas. Siltation and low water levels remain some of the challenges facing electricity generation company Ejenko in its power generating task for the country. But as Chimwemwe Mangaz reads this report compiled by Francis Namondwe, plans are in the pipeline to solve the situation. After touring the new constructed Kamuzu barrage at Liwonde and the diesel power plant at Mapanga in Blanta district, Minister of Natural Resources, Energy and Mining Binton Kutsaira on Wednesday visited Kabijira Hydro Power Station in Chikwawa district. Now at 19 years old, the power station has the capacity to produce and add 129.6 megawatts to the national power grid. However, such is not the case due to the low water levels and siltation, which has taken up over 30% of its water dam. Kutsaira said Ejenko is at the center of power production for the government and urged genuine independent power producers to invest in the sector. We continue to establish uh, what is in the electricity industry. Because if you're going to improve, you improve on the things which are already there. So also the coming and see this place is to see how much power is being generated here at Kapichira and what are the challenges. And if you're going to improve to produce more, what do we do? Uh, so we can see that we have seen this place. The major challenge here is still the water levels. The water levels continue to be so low. So that all the machines here, all the four units are fully operational. They are just in perfect condition, quite operational. But the major challenge is the water levels. So as a result, uh, Injenko is, is forced to switch one, uh, one unit at a time just because of the water levels are not enough. 
the major problem is the uh, the reduction of the of, of 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 the water levels in Lake Malawi and the Shire River. But also in addition to that, you can see that the, the dam here, the Kabachira Dam here, also has got a lot of siltation. That's why you have seen that the the, the Injengo has pro, uh, procured that ship which is there to to assist them in the dredging of the dam to remove all the silt. We also went to the dumping site of the suit, I think we also there, because Ijengo want to take out all the suit and improve and increase the depth of this dam to 12 meters as it was originally done. When you see that this dam now, you can see the water, but I'm told that it may be even four or five meters down has been covered by silt. So now it's a major project we will see Ijengo is studying to remove all the siltation, remove all the silt and dump it to the dumping site which is which has been constructed. When we do that, it means now in general will be providing, will be generating the power which is about to be done and they will not even need switching off one unit or one machine. So all the all the four units, all the four machines will be operational and producing the one uh, hundred and twenty something uh, um, uh, kilowatts or megawatts which this plant produces. As I said, the machines are perfect and perfect condition. The major challenge is the water levels. But in addition to that, that's also in Jengo now is, is moving on, on a thermal power uh, construction project. They want to, to construct their own uh, uh, power plant, which they will be using coal to produce power, to generate power. In addition to, the, in addition to this, when they put their coal plant, now that will be the total completion of, of, all, of all our problems in the next 10 or 20 years. But in addition to that, government has given them all the mandate to do more. Because you can see uh, the provision of energy or the electrical energy in the country is less than 15% up to now. So we want to, we, we have told them that they should do more so that uh, by 2025, we should cover over 50% of the population with power. So that not, that, that not be the end. They, we have given them the mandate to do even more, generate more power and more power. In addition, as I said yesterday, we are also urging those investors, but I'm using the word genuine investors, not just, not, not just brief investors, but those investors who have money, those investors who can do projects on their own, not waiting for the banks in here in Malawi to give them money. No, but those who can come down with money and make an agreement with Jenko, our minister and the government, and put on their power plants, either solar, either coal, either hydro, because I said yesterday, energy, electric energy is the most liable thing that we need. I said that yesterday, that without energy, we are finished. Without energy, there are no factories running. Without energy, there's no food. Without energy, there is no entertainment. Energy is the source of everything. And as I said, Ijenko is at the center of producing power for the government. And that's why we say uh, we, we, we're urging them to do more. Yes, they're already doing quite, I mean, quite okay, but I want them to do more. They should be thinking big. They should think of big projects in order to make sure that they provide the requirement of power in this country. William Liliabunya is a Janko chief executive officer. Uh, here we are, uh, it is at the intake, and we have seen the dam here, that's where we collect our water. And behind me, the, this is where the passage of the water goes for it to go to the machines. So it passes underground here, goes to the machine, and when it goes to the machine, after dropping about 40 meters down, it hits the machines and the machine run, and then we produce the power. Um, in our power production, especially here at Capichila, amongst all the other power stations you'll see tomorrow, one ma major challenge that we have is that of siltation. We, the dam, when you look at it, is filled with water, but the moment we can run the four machines in full capacity, we wouldn't last for two hours with the water that we have. But actually the design of this power station was that we can run the machines for more than four hours, covering the whole peak, even if we have zero flow from upstream. So because of the siltation that is on, the, on, the, on this dam, you'd find that the capacity of the, the, the dam to hold water has reduced from 20, 12, 000, 12 million cubic meters to about uh, 3 million, somewhere around there.
So you could see that about 60-70% of the capacity of the dam has been taken away because of the silt that has been deposited on the dam. Now you would see that uh, um, upstream we have this uh, dredger. Through the uh, support of the Millennium Challenge account, we got this dredger and you saw all these pipes that are being laid. We will start by September dredging of this pond. Through this support and through this dredger, we'll be getting the silt away and hoping that uh, by the end of uh, the next three years, we could claim the whole capacity of the dam. Kabijira is one of the largest hydropower plants in Malawi. Remember, this is Business Time on Times Television, a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories making headlines in the country and beyond. My name is William Kumwembe. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Government has said it is worried with declining fish production in the country. Director of Animal and Livestock Department in the Ministry of Agriculture, Irrigation and Water Development, Patrick Chikungwa, was speaking in Long on Wednesday at the start of a two-day forum on the role of ecosystem-based fisheries management. More in this report by Taonga Sabola. Chikungwa said it was crucial for experts to bang heads on how best Malawi could achieve sustainable fish production. Yeah, uh, today we are here uh, we are attending this important forum uh, on, on, on fisheries, which is uh, focusing on issues concerning the uh, holistic approach to uh, fisheries management in this country uh, uh, based on the ecosystem approach. So basically, uh, uh, we are experts are gathered here to look at uh, what are the uh, major challenges affecting our uh, uh, fisheries uh, 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 production and output in this country. So some of the key issues which are already coming up are the challenges of uh, dwindling or declining of uh, fish stocks, particularly when you look at our chambo in the lakes, which has been declining over the years. So experts are here to, um, to discuss on the most sustainable way which we can manage our uh, 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 fish production so that in a sustainable way, uh, but at the same time paying particular attention to the uh, ecosystem, that means the environment. So the whole issue is about holistic approach to the uh, fisheries management, um, uh, at the same time management of also the natural risk, uh, management uh, or natural resource management in general. United States Agency for International Development Director for Sustainable and Economic Growth, Kulen Hughes, underscored the need for Malawi to scale up efforts in enlightening Malawians on the importance of respecting closed seasons in water bodies, especially the Lake Malawi. Well, I think many Malawians understand that Lake Malawi is a national treasure. But I think uh, if you look at the globe and recognition from the United Nations, it's really a global uh, treasure, natural treasure, and very significant um, for biodiversity. Lake Malawi has the largest number of fish populations of diverse fish in the world, and it's uh, singular in the world. Uh, so this approach to uh, conservation is critical. As in the past, um, Malawi has had an open access approach to the lake. So anyone who's interested to fish in the lake has been able to, um, to harvest as much as they could. But um, going forward, Malawi's taking a turn to start regulatory, regulating the lake and taking a more uh, uh, a smart conservation and regulatory approach. I think part of it is the initial gap is awareness. Um, I think people, particularly fishers, are so used to being able to harvest as much as they want, whenever they want. They're not used to adhering to closed seasons. And so I think the initial gap is awareness among those, not only in the general population, but particularly those working in the sector. Fisheries Integration of Society and Habitats Chief of Party, Alan Brooks, said the ecosystem-based fisheries management is an approach that considers the whole environment and all the different uses and needs of resources therein. 
Uh, <clears throat> the FISH project, uh, funded by the generous support of the American people through USAID, uh, is uniquely positioned to address um, a unique interdependency between the terrestrial ecosystem and the aquatic ecosystem. Okay. So for the duration of this project, we have worked on how we can improve and restore upland forests, how we can uh, mitigate land degradation through um, agricultural practices that um, are causing high excessive soil runoff. And this is because of that interdependency that we have between the two major ecosystems, terrestrial and aquatic. Unfortunately, if you have too much uh, silt-laden water that's coming down from the upland areas into the critical hotspots where we have fish breeding areas, it does compromise their ability to be able to breed and also their feeding ecologies. Let's now turn to automotive industry. Toyota Malawi has launched the new RAV4 fifth edition. The company has been producing the model since 1994. The car has been launched under the theme Endless Journey, Chase the Unknown. We have the whole story in this report. Toyota Malawi Managing Director Kennedy Kabaye said the car was launched to show their commitment to mobility innovation. Toyota Malawi National Sales and Marketing Manager Newton Kasirika Mlawa said the new face keeps them in the loop with changes in the industry. The new RAV4 is a fifth generation in the RAV4 and uh, we are so excited to launch this product today. You know, there have been a lot of changes on the automotive, automobile industry and we have to move with the changes. That, that's why you see the new RAV4 that we have just launched today, tonight, is so evolved to have that, to give our customers that stylish look and the quietness that you enjoy and even the riding co uh, comfort is so a plus in this new RAV4. You know, endless journey that uh, when you get into a RAV4, you think of just keep on going, keep on going, because it's so comfortable, the quietness and matchable, and can take you anywhere. Because we've got several uh, ranges, the 4x4 and 4x2, so whichever terrain, the new RAV4 will take you there. And you are sure that it will not let you down. He added that a car can be driven by anyone. The target market are all Malawians, old and young. And that's why initially well, there have been a perception that RAV4 is for ladies. That's why we had to launch this new RAV4 quickly so that we clear that perception that is on for all customers, whether male, young, middle managers, aged, executives, they can still ride in a RAV4 and they get the same comfort that they expect. Mark, our head of administration and human resource, touted the car after viewing it. Oh, yeah, it's elegant, it's really comfortable, it's impressive. It's all, it's a very good car. Uh, when I look at the, the car, it has been uh, revolving over time, but this one is the best model that we've got. Well, with that story, we've also come to the end of today's edition of the program Business Time, right here on Times Television, a magazine program where we bring you major business and economic news stories, making headlines in the country and beyond. On behalf of the entire production team, my name is William Kumwembe. But always remember, if it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. Bye for now.